Welcome to the Office Instructor channel. We are continuing our series about managing long documents. In our previous lessons, we discussed how to insert building blocks and table of contents. In this video, we'll create an index at the end of a long document. First, I'll show you a brief introduction about index. How to create an index in Microsoft Word 2007 or 2010. An index helps readers find specific words in a printed document. If the document will be distributed electronically, you might not need an index. You can use the Find feature instead. Word creates an index by compiling an alphabetical listing with page numbers based on index entry field that you mark in the document. Although a table of contents is usually created at the beginning of the document, while an index is usually at the end of the document, both of them are entered as single field. A table of contents contains hyperlinks to jump to different paragraphs and is based on heading styles or outline levels. While an index shows specific terms arranged alphabetically with page numbers and is based on index entry fields in the document. To create an index, you follow basically two procedures. First, you insert in your document index entry fields which might apply for a word or phrase, for single or multiple occurrences. To do that, we select the word, then open the Mark Index Entry dialog box from the References tab. Note that index entry fields are formatted as hidden. You can only see them if you click the Show Hide button on the Home tab. The second step to create an index based on these index entries, you position the insertion point where you want the index to appear and click the Insert Index button on the References tab to open the Index dialog box where you can specify the layout and formatting options and also preview your index. When you click OK, Word calculates the page numbers of all entries and sub-entries, consolidates them and inserts an index as a single field in the specified format as a specified location in the document. If you later make changes to the document that affect its index entries or page numbering, you can update the index by selecting it and then clicking the Update Index button on the References tab. Now let's do it together. This is our document to which we want to insert an index. In the, table of con in the table of contents, we'll point to an item. A screen tip tells us that we have to press Ctrl to jump to that heading inside the document. The first step in creating an index is to mark index entry fields inside the documents. I'll select the word receiving and then move to the reference step and click the Mark Entry button. The Mark Index Entry dialog box opens with the word Receiving in the main entry box. I'll change the uppercase into lowercase and click Mark All. For consistency, uh, we will make all our entries lowercase except those for proper nouns. What happened? Word inserted index entry fields next to the word receiving. The index entry field includes the word which in the main entry, the word receiving, is it's enclosed in double quotation between uh, two curly brackets and an XE designator and a dotted underline. The mark entry dialog box remains open to simplify the process of inserting multiple index entry fields. You don't have to click the mark entry button for each new entry. You can move the dialog box off to the side so that it doesn't block the text you are working with. In the document, I'll do the same for the word shipping. When I click the mark index entry, the word shipping will appear in the main entry box. I'll do the same. I'll change shipping, the uppercase to lowercase, and click mark all. I'll repeat for packaging, change to lowercase, click mark all. And then for inventory, change to lowercase and click mark all. 
I'll move in the document to the next page and under the heading phone system, I'll select the word phone. I'll change the entry in the main entry box to phones and click mark all. In the same paragraph, in the same paragraph, I'll select the word intercom and click the mark index entry, click the mark index entry. The word intercom appears as the main entry. Under options, I'll select cross-reference. The blinking insertion point appears adjacent to the space next to the word C. I'll type phones. In such a way, if a reader wants to uh, find information about intercom, I'm redirecting it to another entry, which is phones. I click mark. In the next page, and with the heading ordering supplies, I select the word supplies. I click the mark index entry dialog box, change supplies to lowercase. And in the sub entry, I'll type the word ordering and click mark. In the document, in the next page, I'll select the word packages and in the mark index entry dialog box, I want to insert an index entry field, but with the names supplies. And a sub entry receiving. This is the second sub entry for the word supplies. I'll click mark. Now that we have entered all our index entry fields, we are ready to create our index. I'll close the mark index entry dialog box. I'll move to the end of the document, control end. I'll insert a page break, control enter, and type the word index. I'll apply heading one from the home tab, the style group, I'll apply heading one. At the end of the word, I'll, I'll move to a new line. And now we are ready to enter, to in, to enter our index. First, we have to hide the non-printing characters before inserting the index. Why? Uh, because if we insert the index with the non-printing characters uh, displayed, it might impair the pagination of the document. So we click the Show Hide button on the Home tab and then move to the References tab and click Insert Index. The insert index dialog box opens with multiple options to select from for the layout of the index. I'll make it only one column and then I'll click the right align page numbers to have the page numbers on the right side of the page with tab leaders that I can pick from the list. I select this one and from the formats, I have different formats to select from and we can have a preview in the dialog box, I'll select Formal and click OK. Word compiles an index from the multiple index entry field that we just marked. The index is inserted as a single field. We now want to make some changes to the index entry field and then update the index to reflect those changes. To do that, we we'll go to the Home tab, display the non-printing characters, and I'll move to page 4. And I'll select the cross-reference index entry field by dragging through the opening parenthesis, and on the keyboard, I'll click Delete. I will now hide the non-printing characters once again. I'll move to the end of the document to watch these changes. The cross-reference is still visible. Why? Because we did not yet update our index. I'll go to the References tab, select the index, and click Update Index. What happened? Index is updated to reflect that you have deleted the cross-reference. This was how to create and update an index in Microsoft Word. Thank you for watching and see you next video.